content warning. This vlog will be covering medical situations, death, suicidal thoughts, and trauma. If these particular subjects are trigger points for you, please do not watch this vlog. Thank you. We're getting internet. There's that sun kitty right here. I forgot to pull this before I started. That's okay. <sighs> so, tonight was Monday. I'm just recording this late at night. Been busy with work, which took up a good chunk of my brain power. And then trying to relax from work, which took up the rest of my brain power. Thus, it's late at night. I want to go to bed. Some kitty just slobbered on me. Whatever. Anyway, um, today is April 13th. Uh, it has been five months to the day since my mother passed away, and I had planned for this Vita to talk about my mother on this day. Kind of like for Vita every year since it happened on the 19th, I talk about my father. So I figured the 13th I'll talk about my mother. Um, she... <sighs> losing my mom was rough. I mean, losing anybody's rough. I was a lot more attached to my mother than my father. Uh, part of that is because I lived with my mother my entire life. Well, entire childhood, whereas with... Uh, I'm going to have to do this with my right hand. Oh, this is going to hurt. Um, with my father... I really only lived with him for the first few years of my life, and then weekends beyond that. Which, speaking of, if you have kids, and you get divorced, whoever happens to be watching this, please, please don't do the weekend visitation thing. Oh, that was so horrible for me. It messed me up quite a bit. The reason for that is that that meant that I could never do anything on the weekends with my friends. Because my parents didn't live in the same cities, never mind next door to each other or anything. So as a result, if I wanted to see my father, that meant that was time that I wasn't seeing friends. And since that was weekends, that meant it just wasn't time that I would see friends every weekend. Um, and I didn't really have friends nearby where my father lived because there was nobody my age. Not to mention my Spanish wasn't so great by the time that I became older and my father lived in a primarily Spanish-speaking neighborhood. It's, it's one thing to have friends that speak a language other than you when you had something in common and knew about each other and so on. If it's a completely foreign place that make, makes no sense to you, you kind of don't learn to talk to anybody. Anyway, that's not what I wanted to talk about. Um, if you can't tell, these vlogs are stream of consciousness. The only vlogs that I actually prepare in advance at all are the label series, which there will be another labels video coming up soon. The problem is that it takes a lot out of me, so I need to space them out. So, my mother. Um, I definitely resemble my mother in a lot of ways. I don't mean physically, just actions, behaviors, and so on. Um, my mother's kind of like the way I act when I'm not dealing with extreme amounts of anxiety and stress and so on. In some ways. My mother was extremely stubborn and independent. That sounds awfully familiar. And... She was very kind to a lot of people. Not necessarily me. She wasn't cruel to me, but... Uh, well, I should probably explain. So, around the time that I was dealing with my really nasty depression in high school, um, that would have been... I would have been 16 at the time. Uh, around the time that I was dealing with that, my mother was also dealing with her depression. Uh, she was... Going through, I had just finished going through the application process for disability. Uh, my mother was born with one arm, but that's not the reason why she went for disability. Um, she was diagnosed with fibromyalgia, ooh, 
This was 16. I would have been 12, 13, somewhere in that area when my mother was diagnosed with fibro. And she couldn't work. She didn't work for years. Um, she couldn't. So as a result, a lot of my family helped chip in to support her and me because, well, she couldn't work. Um, she received the reward from... So, for those that don't live in the United States, uh, the way disability works in the United States is that you have to fight tooth and nail for it. It's a terrible system, by the way. So, you usually apply for disability, saying, Hey, look, I am disabled. These are the reasons. Here's my doctor saying that I'm disabled. I can't work, blah, 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 blah. And then the disability office goes, yeah, no, go screw yourself. You can work. And you have to sue the federal government in order to be able to get your disability. Um, lawyers will work on a basis of no money down, but they're claiming 20 to 30% of the chunk of disability that you're owed. Because assuming that your suit goes through and the government reconsiders whether you're disabled or not, which is decided by a judge, so it's not really the government reconsidering, it's more of a victorious lawsuit, you get back all the money that you were owed from the first time that you applied way back. So lawyers will take a percentage chunk of that, which is money that my mother desperately needed, but, uh, well, not much of a choice when you're poor and you need to deal with this. So... That money ended up going toward the house that my mother owned, that now I technically own. Um, the reason for the house was because we were getting priced out of rent. Um, where we lived at the time, that apartment was $450 a month in rent for a two bedroom, one bath apartment in the corner of a triplex on a dirt road in a really bad neighborhood. Oh, so bad of a neighborhood. Um, yeah, that's the neighborhood. When I talk about I knew where the drug dealers were on the block and knew to make sure I stayed away from them when the police raided them, yeah, that's that neighborhood. Um, it's crazy cat hour, apparently. So our rent was being raised from $450 a month, which my mother couldn't afford, but... Well, couldn't afford it until Social Security Disability, but... Afterward, yeah, could afford it to $750 a month, or nearly doubling our rent over the course of one month. Uh, the reason for that is that the triplex was sold off to a group of people who decided that they wanted to make it where they didn't have to pay to live. So it was a triplex, so there was three apartments. They kicked out one person from the apartment, renovated that apartment, moved into there, and then wanted the other two apartments to pay, the two apartments combined were going to pay mortgage interest, uh, mortgage, uh, escrow for insurance and so on, and taxes. So as a result, they raised the rates of everybody else so they can afford their nice, lovely lifestyle. Uh, that was unaffordable. Uh, $750 a month when you make $900 a month does not make any sense. Uh, my mother made a little bit more than that because of me. So when you're on Social Security Disability in the U.S., you are paid a l uh, for each child that you have, you're paid a little bit more. So my mother had Social Security for herself at the time. It was something like $900 or $800, somewhere in that range. And then for myself, which was $350, I want to say. So rent was still a large percentage of our income, but when it's over half of your income, that makes things really difficult to actually afford anything. On the other hand, you could buy a fixer-upper house and your mortgage plus taxes plus insurance would be quite a bit lower than rent, which is what my mother's plan was. Uh, the end result was the house payment, including, at the time, including insurance and tax, was $525 a month. Still not great, but a lot better than it was. Um, she was going through all of this, all at the same time. Uh, my major depressive episode actually overlaps the time that we moved to the house. I didn't live in that house for very long because I left Larda and moved to college. Um, but as a result, she didn't pay attention to me during that time. It's, I mean, I was 16. It's not like I needed day-to-day -day parental 
supervision even. Um, I wasn't exactly the type of child that was going to go out and do crazy things. Or do anything. Yep, it's definitely Crazy Cat Hour. Zone just dive-bombed a cheat. Anyway, um, but at the same time, I was going through really nasty mental health issues. And my mother didn't remember any of this. Um, when I talked to her later, she has zero, zero memory of any of the issues that I went through during that time. She didn't remember that we went to a psychologist and the psychologist wanted nothing more than drug me up and refused to talk to me otherwise. Um, she didn't remember that I would just cry myself to sleep every night, even though walls were not exactly thick at the apartment. She couldn't hear anything that was going on in my bedroom. We had bedrooms that were adjacent to each other. You know how hard it is to do a somewhat serious vlog when this goober here is in crazy cat hour mode? Uh, anyway. So, long story short, that was not a very nice time in my life. And my mother had since apologized for that. Um, not that she remembered anything that happened, but she also knew that I wasn't exactly making any of that up. It's not like she didn't believe me, it's just that it didn't enter her mind. As a result, though, the time of my life that I needed her the most, she wasn't there for me. Yeah. This wasn't the story I was planning on telling. Really, cat? Really? Can you see how fluff the tail is? It's mega fluff right now. There's like 15 mega fluffs in that tail. Um. I don't know why he's reacting quite this way. Kitty cat, you want to come over here? Yeah, he's reacting like there's a wild animal outside that he's running away from. And that is actually possible that's what's going on. The window's open. Son Kitty? Son Kitty? It's okay, Kitty cat. My mother had a love of kitties. Uh, that's actually where my love of kitties came from. Um, she didn't, wow, I'm just really jumping on my mother for this video, aren't I? Um, she didn't quite react to kitties the way I did, though. Um, so prior to moving into that really bad apartment that our rent got increased, uh, for, we lived somewhere else where we were allowed to have cats, and I had two kitties, Badger and Greystroke. Um, I'm actually the one that named both of them, so the only reason why I did was that my mother was even worse at naming cats than I am. I mean, seriously, her last cat was named Kitty. Kitty. Anyway, um, unfortunately, uh, we had to move out of that place in a really big hurry because the house got sold out from underneath us. Strange pattern, that, huh? Uh -huh. Um... And the place that my mother found was the apartment on the triplex. But the triplex didn't accept cats, so as a result, my mother gave away my two cats. She didn't ask me. She didn't let me even really say goodbye, other than, Hey, by the way, we're giving away your cats. Do you want to go on the trip to there? She didn't apologize for that one when I brought it up later. She viewed it as necessary because she and her son were about to be kicked out on the street. And while I do understand that, that doesn't mean that she behaved correctly. My mother was not very good when it came to behaviors dealing with this. And a lot of the things that she did made a lot of sense if you ignored the fact that psychological trauma exists. She was still a really good mother. I, I'm... I know it seems like I'm dumping on her for this video, and that's that's really not what I intended when I started recording, but she did a lot of things to me mentally. I wouldn't call it mental abuse, that's not accurate, but it definitely affected me psychologically. 
it's probably more a sign that she's the one that was able to affect me the most mentally. When she started getting worried about money, that's when my stresses over money started happening and I started getting sick every day. When she started dealing with fighting for disability, that's when I started resenting. <sighs> resenting. I don't even know how to describe. Resenting the fact that people suck. It started tainting my viewpoint of people in general. I have a much more positive viewpoint of people today than I did back then. Um, I generally think that people are good. People and angry mobs, different story, obviously, but if you were to, say, go out in the middle of a street here and something were to happen, like you break your leg, some type of accident, and I screamed out for help, I would reasonably expect to actually be helped. If you would have asked me that when I was 16, I would have laughed at you and said they probably would stab me on the way. To be fair, part of that might be because of Florida. Florida's not a very nice place for anybody, by the way. Um, for anybody who's watching this that doesn't currently live in Florida, do not raise your kids in Florida. It is a terrible experience. You should never do that to yourself or to your kids. Maybe Florida is better today than it was back then. Technically, the move back to Florida was my mother's idea. Um, she gave me a decision when I was six, seven, seven, um, as to whether to continue living in New York City or to move back to Florida. And I chose Florida because, one, New York City was very unkind to me, to put it mildly. Um, I was living in a big city and I was bullied quite a bit, to put it mildly. Bullied pretty much everywhere when it came to school because I I didn't act like I was a part of a big city. I didn't have this attitude to protect me or anything like that. And um, my ability to summon a persona, not Persona 3, Persona, but uh, summon a different entity of myself to protect myself didn't come up until college. So... That was really rough on me. I was expecting people to be generally kind. You know, that whole thing that I was just talking about. And that was not the case in New York City. It's also not the case in Florida, but I didn't know that at the time. So basically it was the devil you know versus the devil you don't, and I chose the devil I don't. That was a mistake. New York City was probably a better place for me. As much as that hate pains me to say, because that's my second least play favorite place to ever be in. Oh boy, this has been a bit of a ramble. So... My mother died one day after her 67th birthday. Um, she was not conscious for that day. We're reasonably sure the last time that she was conscious was on her birthday, and not by much. She was in hospice for the last two weeks of her life, or a week and a half, roughly, uh, because... So I had mentioned before, my mother passed away of colon cancer. What I didn't mention is that it's well, it's not my mother's fault. She could have caught it much sooner than she did. So, she was supposed to have a colonoscopy about three months before any of this started. And if she would have gotten the colonoscopy then, it probably would have detected the early signs of it. And could have been treated at that point. Um, she walked out of her own colonoscopy because it was uncomfortable. That's the type of person that my mother was. She was the type of person, again, stubborn, independent. If she didn't want it, she, she didn't see things going her way, she would walk out. The problem is that she didn't really bend herself to the idea that other people might need her to behave that way. Like, for instance, me being a teenager and needing her assistance for mental health stuff and not getting any. Or, in this case, she realizing that, yes, her doctor just made a simple mistake, maybe try again another day, rather than, oh, screw it, I'm just going to walk out and then die of colon cancer three months later. I probably didn't help that my mother was a lifelong smoker, even after seeing the fact that smoking almost certainly killed my father. Um, and me repeatedly imploring her to stop. She Every time that I told her to stop, she decided to smoke harder. That's the type of person she was. 
she didn't realize she was doing it until later. Um, she and I talked about it later on. But that stubbornness probably killed her. That stubbornness shaped me as well. And I recognize that I'm similarly stubborn in a lot of ways. That's why a lot of you, when you see me in reality, may see me immediately react to something, then stop, think about it for a moment, and then go against what I had just said. That's actually my brain initially reacting with the same type of thing that my mother did, and then go, no, that's not right. I'm reacting. I'm not acting. I'm reacting. Because somebody's going counter to what I'm saying or what I'm thinking. And that's an automatic reaction for me. I need to not do that. And in fact, probably do the exact opposite. So you'll, a lot of people, especially at work, will see me go through that repeatedly. Sorry, not sorry. Um, I'd rather that than just stubbornly hold my ground for absolutely no reason. After all, it killed both of my parents. This is really messy of a vlog, isn't it? Doesn't help that I'm holding my camera instead of using my tripod and real camera like I was intending. Because I can't find my SD card. And I need to record this and upload it tonight. I'm tired. I'm always tired. My mother and I talked quite a bit. Um, we had a phone call every week. And... When my mother was diagnosed with cancer, um, she was diagnosed with cancer and withheld the information from me because she knew it would devastate me. I called her out on that even then, and she admitted that she was wrong. And... We had decided that I was going to come visit. Uh, this would have been mid-November at this point. Um, I emergency came to visit for basically an extended weekend. I wasn't sure exactly when I was going to leave. I went to the hospital where she was staying. She was doing fairly well. Uh, turns out this is the type of thing that happens with cancer patients when they're dying, is that they'll suddenly get better for a short period of time, and then things get much, much worse. Turns out the suddenly get better part was while I was there. Um, she and I talked in the hospital room quite a bit. I stayed two nights in the hospital room with her, along with uh, a couple of nights back at the house. We talked about things like end-of-life planning and just stories in general. We talked more during those few days that I was there than probably the prior few years, even though I visited once a year and talked on the phone every week, we talked about substantial things and that was good. I knew something was wrong toward the end of the time that I was there. Something more than just, my mom has cancer. Um, she had a procedure. Uh, I was to install a drain port, or not drain port, intake port for her chemo. Uh, the plan was that she was going to go through chemo. Um, oh, forgot to mention, she was diagnosed as stage 4 colon cancer on my way to Florida to visit her. That one she did not withheld hold from me. It was literally diagnosed while I was in flight, so can't blame her for that one. But she decided that even though there was only about a 10% chance of her living past 3 months to... or 10 to 15%, I should say, chance of her pa living past 3 months... She was going to roll the odds, because, you know, better than not doing anything, right? So, the last procedure that she had while I was there was installing the port so they can easily give her chemo without having to rip her open constantly. Because an opportunistic infection is much more likely to kill her than even the cancer, um, especially while you're going through chemo. And my mom had been getting more and more lucid. Like, I was warned that she was not very lucid when she first went into the hospital, but when I arrived, I was talking to my mom, and I knew that. I was not talking to somebody who looked like an older version of my mom. I wasn't talking to somebody who was going through a brain fog, like a heavy brain fog. 
My mom's always been a little absent-minded, especially when she was getting older in age, so that part was normal. But... When she came out of the operation and started waking up, her brain wasn't there. <coughs> she was getting confused about where she was and what the situation was. She knew who I was. She recognized who she was. She recognized who I was. She knew how old she was. She knew that she was in Florida. She knew that she was in a hospital. But she thought that she was the owner of the hospital. Who had a special room in the hospital that she would allow the nurses to enter. Because she owned that room and had food in there for everybody. And she wanted to feed everybody. That was the point I knew something was wrong. Um, in hindsight, the reason, uh, the differences in stages of cancer, especially stage four cancer, is basically it's spread throughout the body. <coughs> Colon cancer will frequently spread to lungs and liver and then brain. Looking back on it, that was when it spread, spread to her brain. I didn't fully comprehend it at the time. I sort of knew in the back of my mind, it's like, this isn't quite right. Something's wrong. And sure, it could have just been my mom coming out of um, anesthesia. That makes everybody loopy and everybody reacts a little differently. But it took her a while for her to realize that she was not the owner of the building. However, it didn't ever click that she was... She still thought that she was going to be feeding everybody. She had come up with this great plan that she was going to write cookbooks. So people going through similar things as her was going to um, learn from the cookbook. And she was going to donate all the proceeds so she could have that room in the hospital. And I'm just... And after she... Apparently the anesthesia fog ends for her after she eats. So after she ate, when she realized that she wasn't the owner of anything... She still thought that this was the plan that she was going to go for. And I, that's the point where I took a few steps back and one mentioned, Hey, look, let's first work on the chemo part. And two, Hey mom, if things get too much, you don't have to keep pushing. We had a little bit of the talk before that part, but I, oh, itchy nose. I knew I needed to make sure that she realized that she didn't have to push through that much if she couldn't. That there would be a point where it's okay to go, I give up. It's not something that she does. I mean, I've just given, given said multiple ways how my mom was an extremely stubborn, independent person. And giving up was not exactly a part of her personality, but I told her it would be okay if she had to. And I had to give up at that point. I couldn't deal with being there anymore. I mean, being in a hospital already sets me on edge. The fact that I was dealing with my mother being diagnosed with stage 4 lung cancer at that time sets me further on edge. At least it got her to quit smoking at that point. Um... The fact that everybody else is on edge around me makes it worse. And the fact that I had nobody to talk to and nobody to do anything with, or I, mean, I don't really have people that I visit in Florida. I mean, sure, I have friends that I knew back then and a couple of them are actually living in that area, but it's not like I had the energy to go talk to anybody anyway. That was the point where I knew, yeah, no, I need to get out of here before my mental state deteriorated to the point where I would make an attempt. And I did. Um, I'd used frequent flyer miles to get there. I just bought myself a one-way ticket because I didn't know how long I would be there. And then I left after about five days. I left the day that my mother was supposed to get out to go home, which apparently was an utter disaster of nobody knowing what in the world was going on. But my mother did go home that day. Uh, 
we bought her a recliner that would, you know, had a power assist to kind of lift up. So it would basically help you stand up, which given how weak my mother was and how weak we were expecting her through chemo would have been required. Um, that had arrived that day. So we made sure that it was in the house and could be set up. I left. Um, my mother got home past midnight that night because they took that long to discharge her. She was in the works of being discharged when I left. And apparently they just didn't bother discharging her for 18 more hours. Um, I left. And that week my mother stayed at home with her boyfriend and her best friend both living there. And that was the week that I went to Indiana for Thanksgiving. On my way back, uh, <sighs> on my way back is when I got the call from my mom's boyfriend saying that she had to go back into the hospital, that something was wrong. <sighs> 